Hello there. So I'm just back from Oscon. Feeling very tired actually. Just uh, got into Manchester after a very long two flights from Portland, Oregon. Oscon Open Source Convention and SAP were at Oscon, which was great. And I was helping them out with Open UI5. Just a week before Oscon, 1.22 of Open UI5 was released, and it was just a coincidence, it was a great coincidence, huge release, really, really interesting uh, uh, sets of features. And I thought I'd take a few minutes just to explore uh, one of them for now. Uh, and I think what we'll do is we'll have a look at the multi-combo box. So it's in the sap.m library, so the uh, mobile or responsive library. It's a new control and it's what well, it says here. It allows selecting multiple entries of a list using checkboxes. And as we'll see, is actually made up of, it's like a composite control made up of other controls that exist already in the uh, sub.m library. Uh, the Explore app, which is now a sort of a, a top level app in the SDK, which is great. Sub.m Explore has grown up. We can actually see, we can filter down to the releases. We'll just filter on release 122 and see the things that exist in that release. Now there's the multi-combo box there, you can see there. Anyway, um, because it's got a property, max width, not hugely uh, exciting. Um, it's got an aggregation, which is interesting. So this is where we uh, stick the list of items that are selectable for the list. Um, it's got various events, for example, when the items, uh, so item selection have been changed and so on. But rather than have a look at the documentation, let's, let's have a play around. So I've got a very, very basic, uh, let's make that smaller over there. I've got a very, very simple starter script, which I you know, start most of my one pager apps like this. Uh, I've got the bootstrap script tag. I've got maybe make it one size bigger, two size bigger. There we go, bootstrap tag. Using the crystal, sap.m, um, a lot of complex binding syntax. Why not? Why wouldn't you? And I like to wrap my views in XML. So I've got a little uh, XML script uh, here so I can define my declare my view and I'm instantiating the view by going to use jQuery and grabbing the uh, the content of that uh, view one ID which is up there on line 15 yeah, and placing it on screen in this body over here we can see it running so there's nothing there at the moment obviously uh, Refresh that just to show you. There we go. Nothing running at all. Uh, if we add a just something in, for example, text text equals hello world. Uh, save that, and I've got this auto reload going. This way reload in Atom, really nice. Uh, so we can see that the app's there. So let's have a look at the combo box. Now the combo box itself is no good without any data. Um, so but let's just add the combo box first. The multi combo box rather. Uh, multi combo box. Now you notice that um, I'm not using any um, namespace prefix because the default prefix is uh, the subdomain prefix. Um, whoa, what do we what do we want to do? We want to have a placeholder. Place uh, holder uh, equals. Now um, the data we're going to use actually. Let's just go back here for a second. The data we're going to use. I think I had a quick look before. And it's full screen again. Um, where was it? Yes, here we go. It's part of the SDK. There's lots of sort of product data, and I think this is some mock data from an OData mock OData service using the mock server. So you can see it's a nice sort of array of categories. Just choose categories. You'll notice that it's not quite uh, ready for direct use as a JSON model because there's no sort of key to say, well, this is the list of categories. We're going to fix that as we load it in. So we'll use that. Um, here we go. Let's just grab the URL, the relative URL. And let's, let's go back to there again. Let's take that over there. Now, um, this view, we'll give it a controller. Uh, Local.controller. And we'll create a controller here. Sat.ui. Controller local oops, dot controller. Now, if my typing is even worse than usual, it's because I've had one hour sleep since since I left Portland at eight a.m. yesterday morning. So uh, yeah, there we go. 
Anyway, um, and we'll use the on init function method. Use one of my uh, little atom shortcuts there. Uh, we'll say, okay, s url equals, there we go, product category, and we'll create a model. R O model equals new sat dot ui dot model dot json dot json model s url but we also want to fix that model so we've got a a key that says basically I don't know prop categories or something in there so we'll have an event o model dot attach event is an attach event once which is quite nice when the request is completed, ooh, actually, do you want a function? Um, ooh, ooh, where are we? Oh, there we go. That's not, that wasn't really good, was it? Oh dear, tired Key, keyboard nightmares. Uh, our O model equals new start JSON, JSON model. O model dot attach event. Go. Um, oh, what do we want? What do we want? What do we want? Oh yes. So the the event source is the model itself. So let's grab it. Our own model equals o event dot get source, and we'll say o model dot set data to be product categories. model get data. So it's like inserting a key, saying these are the product categories. There we go, and that should be it. And we'll close that, and we'll also, of course, this dot get view, stick the model on the view. There, now, uh, when we save that, We've got an error, of course, because we're halfway through the multi combo box. Let's just make sure that everything's still okay, though. Text, uh, text equals x. I'm really tired. There we go, there's an x, that's fine. Right. So we'll have a placeholder. Please choose one or more categories. That'll do. Um, and now, the multi combo box had this item aggregation. Didn't it? So we'll say, well, the items are the product categories. There we go. Okay. Let's close that for a second. And of course, the template that we need is what did it say? It said it was a. Um, where are we? A little bit bigger again. The template for the items aggregation was. An item from SAP UI Core. That's okay, so we can go back there again. Uh, move that back there. And we need an item. We need an item in namespace. That's there we go. Uh, core. There we go. So we'll have a core item. Now, an item in core has a key property and a text. What's display property? Uh, there we go. So key is going to be. Now, what was it? Should really, um, where is it? Uh, oh, there we go, we can do this, can't we? Jason, local host, there we go. Oh yeah, category name and category, it's easy to remember. Okay, so. Category, it's going to be the key, like FS for flat screen, uh, I think I saw, and then we've got category, name, which will be the flat screen. Okay, let's see what happens when we do that. Oh, there we go, please choose one or more categories. Hooray, so look now, there we go, that's amazing. That was pretty easy. So what happens when we actually select one? That's really nice, isn't it? Keyboards, uh, flat screens, graphics. It's really, really cool. I like that. Um, we can also remove them. OK, 
keyboard graphics card. That's cool. So let's have a look actually what um, what this is made up of. Let's bring up the super uh, support diagnostics utilities. There we go. So we've got the XML view itself. There's the multi combo box, the whole thing. And ah, yeah, the pop down or the pop over rather is what contains the list. And we've got standard list items with some custom data in there. The custom data has got this value AC for accessories and the custom data there is your FS for flat screens. Um, here's a standard list item and that one I'm guessing yes is selected. It's really nice. So as you can see it is made up of, it's like a composite thing made up of existing controls. Really cool. Um, what else can we do? Let's have a look. We've got the um, in fact, what we'll do is give it an ID. Um, I don't know, multi combo box that'll do for now. So let's have a look. Let's choose some. Um, one, two, three. Accessories, flat screen, printer. So uh, MCB equals overview, so overview in the scope uh, by ID MCB. There we go, we've got it. Um, and we can say mcb dots get selected items. Well, that's going to be a list of list items, isn't it? Yes, there we go. So there's the first one. In fact, I'll just check something. Uh, get the first one and get metadata data data. Yeah, it's an item. So we can also do go mcb dots. Uh, get selected keys, can't we? Let's see what it gives us. Oh, there you go, yep. AC, accessories, flat screens, PR printer. Cool. MCP.remove selected keys. Let's try and remove a key, let's see what happens. I guess it's going to be an array like that that gets selected keys. Um, let's remove the middle one, FS. It's going to be flat screens, isn't it? Doof. Wow, it works. So there you have it, quick overview of um, one of the new controls from release 122. Thanks for watching.